to um, the church at Cars Lane, whether you're uh, here in person or worshipping at home online. Um, there is one notice which uh, Andrew is going to come up and give in a second and there was also some information on the screen um, about a book club which is starting, um, there it is. Um, so for more information, um, speak to Christina, um, Andrew. Um, just some uh, sad news in that one of our long-standing members who um, left Cars Lane some years ago has died. Uh, some of you will remember John and Sheila Hickman who were very involved in the church for many years. Uh, John was uh, involved in looking after the building for um, a long, long time. Sadly, Sheila died a couple of days ago. We don't have any details of the funeral, but we will let you know in due course uh, timing and where it is likely to be. I'm just going to sneak in with an extra message to say that we've got a, a, a student with us this morning who's doing a course at college and would like some photos of a Christian worshipping community. So she's going to be taking some photos this morning. So if anybody doesn't want to be in the photo, if you could let us know and then we can make sure that you're not in any of the photos. So just have a word with me after the service. Thank you. Do you want to say that? Good morning, everyone. Let us uh, worship God together. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here again. I can see that the day is becoming long, so there's hope, even for the UK. So let us be happy. Let us celebrate that um, we are here. Let's take a deep breath and let us rejoice because we are God's beloved children. Throughout the service, I would like to invite you, if you can and if you are able, uh, to follow and to read together in the bold type. So let us open our heart as we approach our call to worship. God of the journey, as we gather together, may be we aware of your presence in the past, in the present, and in the future. Vulnerable God, you challenge the powers that rule this world through the needy, the compassionate, and those who are filled with longing. Amen. So let us pray. Powerful God, we come before you today knowing that you do not choose us because we are clever or strong or powerful. Rather, you call us to rely on your wisdom, to fight in your strength, and to boast that you are always there for us. Help us to walk humbly with you each step of the way before us. And in our worship today, give us fresh insight and renewed commitment for that journey of faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let us sing together our first hymn, God is love, let heaven adore him.
please be seated. Let us now have a, a time of prayer where we praise God, but also bring to God our shortcomings. So let us pray. Source of all wisdom, source of all goodness, we come into your presence today to worship you. May we choose justice, love, kindness. May we walk humbly with you, almighty and precious God. Living Lord Jesus, when we choose to live arrogantly, let us choose to live meekly. When we choose to be strong, let us see strength in weakness and allow you to work in us. When we only see darkness, show us your light and give us hope. When we will go it alone and rise above others, let us choose unity. When we favor popularity and success, let us choose humility. When we aspire to power, let us choose servanthood and love. We come before you and we are sorry because sometimes we choose the opposite of what you desire for us. Forgive us and help us. Help us to walk with you on the way of kindness, humility, justice, and love. And we take a few minutes of silence as we imagine ourselves following Jesus on that path. God of justice and mercy, full of compassion, you have gracefully forgiven us, allowing us to start again. Help us to rejoice and praise you, for we are free through your cross and resurrection. We are forgiven in you and have new life. Amen. Let us now hear our readings for today. Today's first reading is from Micah 6, 1 to 8, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear you mountains, the Lord accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How can I burden you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you. Also, Aaron and Miriam. The better? Yeah. And Miriam. My people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted, and what Balaam, son of Beo, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with the thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, immortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly 
and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your, with your God. The second reading, again, is from the New International Version. It's Matthew 5, um, 1 to 12. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Thank you, Amina. We are going now to listen and see a drama called uh, How to Install Love. Dreen, dreen. Yes, ma'am, how can I help you today? Well, after much consideration, I've decided to install love. Can you guide me through the process? Yes, I can help you. Are you ready to proceed? Well, I'm not very technical, but I think I'm ready to install now. What do I do first? The first step is to open your heart. Have you located your heart, ma'am? Yes, I have. But there are several other programs running right now. Is it okay to install while they are running? What programs are you running, ma'am? Let's see. I have um, Past Hurt, EXE. I've got Low Esteem, EXE. I've got Grudge, EXE. And resentment.com running right now no problem love will gradually erase past hurt XE from your current operating system it may remain in your permanent memory but it will no longer disrupt other programs love will eventually overwrite low esteem dot X with a module of its own called high esteem Dot X. However, you have to completely turn off grudge.exe and resentment.com. Those programs prevent love from being properly installed. Can you turn those off, ma'am? I don't know how to turn them off. Can you help me? My pleasure. Go to your start menu and invoke forgiveness.exe. Do this as many times as necessary until grudge.exe and resentment.com have been completely erased. Okay, done. Love has started to install itself automatically. Is that normal? Yes, you should receive a message that says it will reinstall for the life of your heart. Do you see that message? 
Yes, I do. Is it completely installed? Yes, but remember that you have only the base program. You need to begin connecting to other hearts in order to get the upgrades. Oops, I have an error message already. What should I do? What does the message say? It says error 412, program not run on internal components. What does that mean? Don't worry, ma'am. That's a common problem. It means that the love program is set up to run on external hearts, but has not yet been run on your heart. It is one of those complicating programming things, but in non-technical terms, it means you have to love your own machine before it can love others. So what should I do? Can you pull down the directory called self-acceptance? Yes, I have it. Excellent. You are getting good at this. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Click on the following files and then copy them to the My Heart directory. Forgive self dot doc relies word dot txt and acknowledge limitations dot doc. The system will overwrite any conflicting files and begin patching any faulty programming. Also, you need to delete verbose self-critic dot exe from all directories and then empty your recycle bin afterwards to make sure it is completely gone and never comes back. Got it. Hey, my heart is filling up with new files. Smile.mpg is playing on my monitor right now and it shows that peace.exe and contentment.com are copying themselves all over my heart. Is this normal? Sometimes. For others, it takes a while, but eventually everything gets downloaded at the proper time. So love is installed and running. You should be able to handle it from here. One more thing before I go. Yes? Love is freeware. Be sure to give it and its various modules to everybody you meet. They will in turn share it with other people and they will return some similarly cool modules back to you. I will. Anything else I should know? Well, most people feel all they need is an annual checkup to stay heart healthy, but the manufacturer suggests a schedule of daily maintenance for maximum efficiency. Thanks for your help. I will do. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh. <laughs> so let us sing together our next theme, Jesus is Lord, the creation's voice proclaims it.
yes, because it's a new setting. I still don't know where I place myself. I, I'll promise I work on that. So let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our refuge. Amen. Do you know the Matryoshka dolls? They are originally from Russia and are a set of wooden dolls of different sizes, one place inside the others. Well, the Beatitudes that we have heard today remind me of those dolls. They talk about God and God's love, showing us the different aspects of this love. The Beatitudes can be read as a list of virtues. However, rather than a list, they show how to navigate in the adversities of life, keeping an attitude of hope, anchoring fast to God's love and God's promises of salvation. Moreover, the Beatitudes offer us a glimpse into the kingdom of God, a kingdom that is offered to those who are struggling and are generally ignored from society. But exactly what is the kingdom of God? Again, the image of the Matryoshka's dolls comes to mind. For the kingdom of God brings different layers of meaning in itself. What we can say about it is that it manifests when God reigns. It discloses itself in human history and in the life of each one of us. Jesus teaches us how God has established this kingdom for all those who are poor, broken-hearted, imprisoned, enslaved, and afflicted. Not because pain makes us noble or pure, but because the kingdom of God brings a promise of salvation and freedom that calls us to two realities that in that pain and that affliction, we are not alone, but God is with us. And that that pain and that affliction are not the last harbor. Consolation and restoration will come to all God's children. Those who have no strength, those who feel that the storm is too strong the waves too high, the kingdom of God reminds us that we find rescue in the God who has calmed the storm and tamed the waves. That God in Jesus constantly whispers to us that we are blessed, blessed and hold in God's love and grace. The kingdom of God is a reality here and now that connects us all through God's love and at the same time is a reality yet to come. We are called to participate actively in the fulfillment of the kingdom with kindness, being meek, taking care of the creation and the creatures earnestly working for peace and justice, for that is part of our answer as children of God. Now, it is important to know that in the Old Testament, to be called means to become reality. God is calling us to be part of God's kingdom, which is right here and right now. By renewing our participation in God's kingdom, we become more and more aware of God's presence. We become more aware of God's support around us, and we continue to grow in hope and compassion and commit to justice and peace. 
So blessed may we be as we receive and share God's kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. Because you called us, we became a reality. Because you offer us your kingdom, we became citizens of it. Help us to be meek. Help us to work and be peacemaker. Help us to feel that you are holding us even when we are afflicted and brokenhearted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now sing together our next theme, Breath on Me, Breath of God. Please be seated. Let us now gather in our time of prayer when we pray for ourselves but also for the community and the world. Every time I say, God of justice and mercy, would you please answer with, hear our prayers. God of justice and mercy. Almighty and powerful God, for those who do not know you, for those who do not know the depths of your love and care, we pray may your spirit speak to them and may the deeds and the words and the actions of how we live shine with your spirit for them. God of justice and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn, who have had their lives changed, turned upside down by the death of family, friends, or neighbors. In their grief, may we and you be a comfort to them, a strength in times of trouble, a light to lead the way in their darkness. God of justice and mercy. We pray for those who daily, no matter what the cost to themselves, speak out your words of truth, who live lives reflecting your glory, 
which they step out to help and heal and care and to show your love even in face of danger. God of justice and mercy. We pray for those who find it within them to forgive others who really repent, those who forgive for the good of others and society, those who show mercy and compassion. God of justice and mercy. We pray for those who work for peace, who strive for peace, who yearn for peace, those who engage at the highest levels of state, seeking peace, and those who stand on the battlefield, yearning for conflict to end and peace to be restored. We also pray for those caught in the middle who feel helpless and hopeless in the face of war and aggression. God of justice and mercy. We pray for those people whose tragedies, injustice, crisis and suffering make the news headlines today and the past week. God of justice and mercy. And as we come closer to the end of this prayer, we pray for our families, our friends, our neighbors, those we know and love and care, those we know need our prayer. And we remember the family of Sheila, her husband John, and the family mentioned before. God of justice and mercy. Hear our words of God. Hear the yearnings of our hearts that we may walk humbly with you, sharing love and generosity wherever we go. Help us to see the light. Help us to be able to smile even if life seems difficult knowing that you are there, holding us in the palm of your hand. Accept all the prayers, spoken and unspoken, in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. So let us now continue our time in prayer as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. And please feel free to use whatever language or version you feel more comfortable with. So we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So let us take a moment also to think of the generous contribution that the members and friends of Carl's Lane have been continued to give to the church. So let us bring those offerings that are not happening um, throughout our worship, but at the end and online, let us bring those offerings before God. Let us pray. All our possessions are worthless unless dedicated to you. All our belongings are of no value if owned with thankless hearts. So we offer back to you what was always yours, asking for your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Amen. 
As we prepare to sing together our final hymn, I would like to say a thank you to all the people who are making this worship possible. Today we had some problem with the screen, so Magic Ruth um, did something. Also, actually Carrie prayed over, uh, so thank you Carrie for that. Thank you for the music, for the choir, and thank you also for the streaming. So. With a joyful and thankful heart, let us sing together our final hymn, More Like You, Jesus. Let us receive the benediction, let us pray. Generals, God, you bless us in so many ways. You love us just as we are, and you also want us to grow closer to you. Show us how we can bless others by putting them and you before ourselves. May we walk humbly with you every day, and may the peace of God, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>